Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello everybody, thank you for joining me. I'm going to be doing an update on what I've been doing with role playing. So basically tabletop role playing is a big thing for me. Dungeons and Dragons, superheroes, westerns, Star Wars, Star Trek, etc. And I did a live Facebook stream or was it a YouTube? Either way, it was like two hours or three hours. And I was detailing what I was trying to do with a certain site that I found. So I found two sites that are really good for tabletop role playing. It enables people to join online and play no matter where you are. You don't need a camera. It is mainly audio. Now in the future, I might add cameras and I have that down on another podcast. What I might do with a camera pointing down and different angles of the pieces on the board. However, to play online with a lot of people, the site I chose, which is free, is Roll Die 20. There's a paid site I might go to. It has more bells and whistles and has a better theme. And I might get to that eventually, but I'll see how the, this takes off the traction on it. So I reached out to a couple of friends who have helped me. One is helping me with a Dungeons and Dragons adventure. Uh, the campaign is uh, The Witcher based on the video game novels and now TV show. And the other campaign is a superhero campaign, which is an amalgamation of every superhero genre. Uh, the ones that I limit are alternate universes, alternate realities. So although mostly DC superheroes, Marvel, Image, Valiant, they'll all be amalgamated into this one earth but if I come up with ideas for like the TV show, The Boys, I have a character who travels through the dimensions and alternate reality and lands into the, the universe of the TV show, The Boys. Other than that, mostly if people are interested in a genre or a certain comic book line, I'll let them fit it in and play in that world or create new ones. So with that in mind, I did a couple of sessions on the Dungeons and Dragons learning how to use the site it comes with a map you could input your images it has tokens which are like miniatures which represent your characters the creatures and enemies and you can also put in themes like a castle or a town or a bar logs and trees that type of thing so I did the same thing with the superheroes and another friend helped me with that. And I found two new friends online who we were discussing other things like uh, with the great debate community and free will, those type of conversations. And I mentioned that I was working on the role playing or they had seen my live broadcast stream. In any case, I created new characters with them online. So I used the site to not only have my experience players help me set it up because they can get into the system easier they know how to use the dice and for the superheroes i'm using the marvel saga system which is a deck of cards which is comes from the dragonland saga when wizards of the coast took it over so there's two different mechanics the superhero one the two new players learned all online because they live in different states. We did a beginning adventure for each of them. And one of them has been on a second adventure. And I think it's going great. Learning quickly, it seems to be easy to cite. It has its own audio and video input, so you don't have to have another means of communication. Although I will sit in my Discord and while I'm doing art for it and I'll discuss things like role playing, but we can go right to the site and you don't have to stay in a discord or a messenger group or anything like that. So it has its own uh, setup. I was able to import the Marble Saga cards, which was fucking tedious. I had found online um, 
images or PDFs of the cards all stacked together in rows. So I had to cut them individually and then put all 97 cards into the system. But it worked great. So now I got the Marvel Saga system. I can play all the superheroes. And although I call it the Marvel Saga, it is called the Marvel Saga system. It's a superhero campaign. So yes, there'll be DC characters. I'll just use the mechanics. And eventually I would like to get blank cards and include other comic book universes characters on the cards because the cards are obviously Marvel superheroes and villains. So the progression has been good. I'm really happy with how it's working. The only drawback I see is social cues. So when you're at the table and I got my friends here, uh, even if it's four, four people, five people you sit around the table and you each got your little set of dice and you roll them. That works fine on the site, but the cues of when I'm talking and when I stop talking, if I give a look to a player, if I raise my eyebrow or give a questioning glance, you get the rhythm of when the DM, the GM, dungeon master or game master is talking and when you're gonna respond. And it's a much easier flow. So it took me, it's taken me a little bit of time, but I think I've got the rhythm where I need to narrate the adventure, describe everything, and then ask particular characters questions and ask them how they would proceed in certain circumstances. So if I describe they're eating at a diner and they see, um, they hear people yelling in the Central Park, the saber tooth and some villains are running through. What do you do? I might describe the weather, what they had done that day and things like that. But in real play, uh, when you're with the people in the room, it's a much easier flow. Online, I'm getting the hang of getting the flow and keeping it going, but knowing when to sit back and let them joke around, let them talk and banter between themselves and when I have to keep the story moving, but it's a minor thing. It's maybe I just found really good players or people really eager to play and open to uh, learning a new system. Although my friends helping me who are dedicated players for 20, 30 years really helped. So thank you. And I'm excited about where it's going. I eventually will look to probably use it as a live stream so I could see two to three hours, uh, depending on the players. I mean, I'll go way longer if I, you know, if the need arises and have people listen in live. So the campaign would start, uh, I would describe events and even this format has to be worked in and I'm trying to work on it. Because it's easy, like I said, to work in the house. And if you're going to a store or over someone else's house, you bring your books and you set up, you get the papers, you hand out your character sheets. This site does its best for free. Now, you can pay and get more stuff, dynamic lighting and things like that. But for now, I want to test the waters. I don't want to commit to paying money or a subscription fee if it's not going to work out. Or if it's just me and my friends who are going to play here in my house. But because of the coronavirus and the social distancing, it's been a godsend. It's been, you know, I got friends that are stuck in their house and they love to play. They want to play. Now we got a means to do it. Now, personally, I would do it over the phone. I mean, I don't really care. But now you have a system laid out on an online website. It goes in your browser. You join the site, you join the game or you're invited. And you have everything you need there. Dice. Character sh- character sheets are there. You can pop out the character sheets if you want to use a multi-monitor uh, setup and have them in different windows so you can monitor your character sheet. The deck of cards is there. You got all the dice. And as a tool for the GM or DM, I have ways of putting the maps in, creating folders for my tokens or miniatures 
organizing it. And the progress progression has been awesome. I'm having lots of fun, especially with the new players who are excited. I'm I don't I'm not a good artist where I can draw. Although at times I like to doodle because it's a form of meditation for me. And I suck at it. I don't draw good. But what I think I have a knack for is putting putting existing artwork together in a pattern to make banners or thumbnails. Maybe that's called graphic arts or whatever. And I had a history and an experience with skinning uniforms and characters in video games, particularly Freedom Force that came out years ago. With that in mind, I'm I go into Photoshop. I, I even made mistakes on the first 20 characters I put into the game with the dimensions and uh, the resolution. But I learn now. So I'm um, using some of the tricks and tips and little things I learned along the way to get some of the characters I love and like Superman or Shazam, Wonder Woman, Wolverine, Cyclops. Uh, speaking of Cyclops, I had some skill and experience with animating. And I'm not talking about really in-depth animation, although I did flash stuff and banners back in the day. So I took in a picture of Cyclops who was touching his visor and I animated an optic blast. And the game lets it work. It permits it. Not only does it permit it, when you touch the icon and you select it, you can pause the animation. So it's awesome. I did the Wolverine claws popping out with the snicked. And this way you can pause it when the claws are out, when he's going into battle. So in that case, it gives me freedom of create, you know, being creative. Some characters I can animate and some are just like a glowing hand and I have it flashing and pulsing. I've been having a lot of fun with it. Uh, I hope the people who are learning are having fun, but it's hard. Because when you got two new players and uh, you, you give one a primer adventure to learn the cards, the mechanics. The other one wants to start and you got to teach them, but the other one's waiting. So I try to have a plan of new players who don't know anything about the systems to meet one-on-one. -on -one go on the site and have a little adventure, give them their origin, so to speak, and progress from there and then have them join. And that's where I am now. So I got, let's say, two to three experienced players who have helped me, and two of them could play regularly, let's say. And I got two new players who have just learned the superhero system and are ready to go on adventures on a consistent basis. So that's up to me now to plot the stories, get the maps ready, get the tokens ready, and keeping in mind the randomness of role-playing and tabletop role-playing. So I see this as being a really fun uh, adventure uh, journey in podcasting for me. It's something I've wanted to do. And I've explained that if the time comes where I get better equipment and I'm in a better place, I could see multi-camera, uh, angles in my house. So let's say I have five people at my house. I'm doing nothing online. I would stream that too. But this is great to get people who are sitting around in their houses who want to play and they, you know, they're isolated and bring them right into the game. I'm trying to develop a system to get the new plays in. And that kind of goes with the players being a little understanding. And helping other players along. So right now, I'm not saying I'm going to be streaming these campaigns live. I might start recording them and editing them if I have to. Because I always want to build experience and get better at everything. I'm thinking of using a new type recording and streaming services. I uh, put the podcast on Spotify found a cool podcast site called Anchor, which is free. I was using SoundCloud and had a limitation. And I noticed that I wasn't keeping up to date with every podcast. Only five on there. And I'm up to 80 videos on my YouTube. 
Now with Anchor, there's no limitations. As I do them, I can keep updating them and then go back into my content that I've done and easily rip the audio and upload them. So my podcast will be building up and I want to do little playlists so people could choose to listen to role playing and, and etc. So I don't know if I'm ready to say Wednesday nights, superhero campaign, Friday nights, Dungeons and Dragons, watch live, get in the live chat soon, possibly. I also want to develop a system where people in the live chat can actually impact the game. So there are people who could just type, they're at work. And I've explained this in another podcast, but a, a method to keep people who are monitoring the situation. So you could say people in the live chat are in a shield installation monitoring everything. And they can give clues and inputs, uh, particularly in Marvel and Dungeons and Dragons. It could be part of an envoy and have NPCs around that people in the live chat could join. And I'm working towards that. But right now, uh, experienced players, it works great. New players, maybe I got lucky, but it's working awesome. It's been, it's great. I'm having so much fun. They seem excited. And that's where I am now. Um, getting the rhythm of it, seeing how well we can coordinate the adventures, how they flow, what the time frame will be, my delivery of narrative, and the responses from the players. Because in the beginning, I sometimes have to speak for players and give them movement and actually play them in a sense for little tiny spurts to give them the cues they need to get really into the game. I don't like forcing people or recommending people have to speak in a certain way or act in a certain way. So when the superhero campaign I decided to make them superheroes. And what I mean by that is if I have a friend, Mary, we are talking in the Great Debate community, and she wants to play, I make the plot that the reason why we've been contacting each other in Great Debate, or I reached out to you, is because I run a shield division called the Initiative, and you're selected because you have a mutant gene or a meta gene or you have the blood of a god, and whatever, and that we see you're going to manifest your powers. So that's kind of the theme with the superhero campaign. It's more whoever you are in real life, or whatever your moniker is and avatars you use, it doesn't matter. You become a hero. You're designated for, uh, for whatever purpose I'll come with at the time. And this way, you get to be yourself. No need to feel restricted or worried about, you know, am I playing the superhero correctly? Because, for instance, if you want to play Spider-Man and you're a deadpan and you're in a bad mood that day, I mean, maybe that's Spider-Man that day. But there might be always something in the background where, oh, I got to tell jokes and I got to be quippy and witty. Um, do I got to play Tony Stark, like um, the actor who plays him? You know, so... My idea for the superhero campaign is you become a superhero. We'll, we'll put you in like that. And I'm using S.H.I.E.L.D. as the organization. I think that's really it. That's the update. Um, moving forward, I'm getting better. I'm getting to the point where I think I'm confident to start recording some of these. It might take one or two more. And I'm going to try to do live streams in between until this virus thing is over. And maybe I'll touch on that in certain aspects, show uh, screenshots like I did with Dungeons and Dragons. I think I used the shield helicarrier as the base. It's a map I can keep reusing. And I got a crappy Lego picture of it for the outside and an inside map. And that's like the base where we always start, usually. And then I set up the maps underneath, hidden, where I can say, okay, you know, you're sitting outside a diner, and you see an aura around somebody. What do you do? 
and then I would show the map of uh, it's hard to find, and I'm that's another thing I got to do is find good maps and get the right resolution, and they don't stretch, they don't look ugly. But I'm moving forward. I think soon I'll have a uh, schedule in mind, what days I would play. And it would start with just recording, seeing if it needs editing. And then when I'm confident enough, the players are confident enough. Because I'm not going to do anything without the player's consent, obviously. I'm not going to record people and put it out there. And I think that's the update. Now, Dungeons & Dragons is a little different. It's a much more complicated system. It's a more in-depth dive. So I'm being, I'm being a little cautious with that. I would say Dungeons and Dragons would be a later thing. Although I'm going to keep progressing towards it. The superhero system is very easy to set up, maintain, keep the momentum going. Uh, I don't know if I said this on another podcast, but one of the differences would be saying in Dungeons and Dragons, um, Friday night, one in the morning, everybody's getting ready to leave. You say, okay, all right, you're camping. You two are on watch, and we're going to end it here. Next week, when you come to play, you start right from there. You know, you might even make note who is up, who's on watch, and then continue. Whereas when you play in the Marvel system or superhero system, for me, it's not odd to end an adventure in the S.H.I.E.L.D. installation. You know, going, writing up uh, your logs of what happened in that adventure. And then the next time we start, you're in a dungeon chained up. And I got to tell the story in flashbacks in reverse to see how you got there. So it's a much more adaptable, versatile, random, chaotic, uh, uh, real fun system. With D&D, you know, it's usually by the numbers. Um, there's a There's a much more... There's more complexity to how the system works. And Marvel gives me an opportunity to play a little more random and a little more surprise for me. So I don't see the Dungeons and Dragons progressing fast that it would be something that pairs up with superheroes. So I would schedule them both. But I could see Marvel superheroes going forward with at least two, three players on a consistent basis. I hope everybody's doing good and staying healthy.